Good morning, Your Honor. Cheryl Luckoff on behalf of the plaintiff. Where are we on this one? So, Your Honor, the, at the initial hearing, judgment was granted. There are bed bugs in the unit. It's a health hazard. And then uh, Mr. Wazorek filed a motion um, to set aside the default judgment. And it's my understanding from speaking to my client this morning that Mr. Wazorek is, is planning to vacate the premises. So I'd like to clarify that. Sure. Say that again. Did that can you are you, you heard? Yeah, I'm hard of hearing. I'm my hearing. I don't have uh we have equipment if that will help you, sir. Yeah. All right, let's get that. I usually wear hair, hearing aids and my hearing aids are bad. So need to get a new okay. Set. Let's see. That that help you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You filed this motion to set aside the default, but the attorney was asking or had been informed by her client that you were planning on moving out. I wouldn't plan on moving out. I just asked that if I plan on moving out, I would need more time because I didn't have no time to set up anything. And I wasn't actually wanting to move out. But I just, they were saying I need to move out. I had fixed, made sure all the problems were taken care of in the apartment. <laughs> I've had um, Section 8 come in there twice now and check it. Themselves, they haven't checked it at all. They had one guy come in, one maintenance man come in, bring up these... Um, Charges about garbage being in my house. Well, the garbage wasn't garbage bags. Those were stuff that pots and pans and everything that we had cleaned up and put in that because they told us we needed the cabinets all cleared out. So those weren't garbage bags. Those were all our dishes, food, um, pan goods, all that. I put them in the garbage bags to be able to clear the cabinets out so they could spray for cockroaches, which we never had to start with. And I had told them that. And they said they were going to, this was on oh, Friday. Before you, before you go on. Okay. Because I'm dealing with your motion to set aside the default. Ms. Luckoff, were you present at the yes. previous year? Yes, I was present. I put the proofs on the record with a witness. Your Honor, um, and what we had put on the record was that on the second, um, my client's pest control was denied entry because he was not prepared. And then again, the day of court, they were denied entry. And so at that juncture, uh, we did take testimony um, and the court established that there was a health hazard, that there are bed bugs that weren't being treated. And that is why the judgment was entered and the immediate order of eviction, which was prayed for in the complaint. So um, if you'd like me to argue the motion, I can certainly argue it. I, this has been a chronic problem. There's just a, a, a cleanliness issue and bed bugs, obviously, court, I don't have to tell the court about the problem with bed bugs. So, I mean, we're looking for possession okay. of the premises, Your Honor. But, but again, I, I can argue the merits of the motion as well, if you'd like. Well, uh, one thing that I'm a, a bit confused of is, is that in the defendant's motion, He's saying that, and as I look at the judgment, he's saying that he was there but defaulted. He was there, but then, if I remember correctly, I think he disappeared at one point. And, and we waited no. for, yes, because, Your Honor, I actually went to a judge's meeting because we wanted to wait to give him time. I went to another Zoom judge's meeting, came back. And he still wasn't there, and that's when uh, Judge Barr entered the judgment. Your Honor, I was there. They muted me. It was over Zoom, and they muted me. So I, they couldn't get me there because every time I kept saying, "Your Honor, I'm here. Your Honor, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here," and they wouldn't. They just kept saying, "You're you've been muted," and I never got to say a word. Well, he actually did get to say a word because he did put proofs on as well, and then. We ended up well. Can can I ask if if that's the case? 
Why, why was this judgment by default? Well, as best I can recollect, because he didn't come back. I think what I happened, actually, Your Honor, I, I believe I had to, and it'd be interesting if we could pull up that transcript, because I'm going by my memory here, but I may have needed to get my um, witness on, and so we took a break. I do yeah. remember having to get Wendy on, and then he wasn't there, so we took another break. That's when I went to the judge's meeting, which was at noon, so I think it was, but he, we did hear from him originally. Yeah, it's not that he was never the heard. First time, the first time I was heard, but then they came back. I called the court clerk, asked what was going on with this case. And she told me, well, they're going back in there. And, well, I couldn't hear no judge say that they were coming back. And the witness they had, you mean Wendy, they were coming back. They told me, on, and the court clerk told me that he was making a final decision that I had to get back into Zoom and find out what was going on because, I, and that's when they couldn't hear me at all. I couldn't be heard at all. So when they brought Wendy in there, I tried to talk. I couldn't, that was a totally muted. It was muted on their end, not my end. My son was right there listening. I had him on loudspeaker. He was there listening. He heard the whole thing. I didn't get a chance to say a word. <laughs> The second time, and when when he came on there, the uh, assistant manager, and she kept talking, and I kept trying to object, and they couldn't even hear me at all. It was like I wasn't even there. It's like a, a, a speaker said, "You've been muted," and I couldn't say a word. But you're alleging that the that well, what you're alleging which would cause me a bit of concern is that you were there and that the court muted you. Exactly. Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, your February rent is paid. Yes. I'm going to adjourn this to March 1st, 2024 at 10 a.m. At 10 a.m. Um, in the interim, I'm going to take a look at the video of what transpired. Okay, I appreciate if, it. And Your Honor, if I may, I mean, the, the issue here is, and, and I'm totally fine with everything you're saying. I'm not even placing an objection. I just want us all to be clear here because this is regarding other residents' health, you know, due to bed bugs. So I want to put on the record here because, as you know, I am transparent. They did go in last week. They did treat last week. Um, they have to go back in again next week. So we're still asking for possession of the unit, but I want to make sure we can get back in to treat just to protect the other residents. So we'll come back. I, I have no problem with anything the court's doing. That's just, I wanted to put that okay. on. Yeah. I got, I yes, got you. I've now had no objections. Well, sir, hold on. All I'm saying is you need to let them in so that they can treat the premises. Yes. I, I just want to look at the what happened because if something procedural happened where he was muted, then I've got a different problem than what I may have. All right. Okay. Yeah. Because the first time they, the one time they, so I'm not hearing what happened. I just okay. need you to let them in so that yes, they treat I've been doing that, and then we'll see you next. Yes, Your Honor. I've been doing that. I've been letting right. Them in. Yes. Thank you. Your name again, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, can you state your name? <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, what happened? Well, Your Honor, I think we have an agreement, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I can give the court a little bit more background. Okay. Ms. Brewer has a son who has some severe difficulties. And he's caused some problems in the building such that we can't rent units and we have tenants who want to move out because of fear for their safety. So none of this is of her making. But the problem is we've got to recover the unit. So what we talked about was a conditional dismissal that would provide that she would have to vacate by April 1st. By when? April 1st. 
And we also discussed that, look, if she's, you know, if she's got a lease in hand for another place and she needs an extra week or something like that, we're not going to ask for a writ. But, you know, at this point, I think she did not sign the conditional dismissal. We talked about her, you know, her rights in her MCR 4.201J and all of that. But to the extent that she wants to address the court, I think that's probably the next step here. All right. Ms. Rurer, what do you want to tell me? I just want to say, um, I apologize. My son doesn't, he's never been on my lease. Uh, he lives with his girlfriend in Jackson, so he comes to visit and he caught me up. Um, and um, they were telling me outside that they had, had complaints about my son. Um, yeah. And at the time, that was prior to um, them having uh, management. We were, they were people in the building um, that were selling drugs and um, using meth with heels or whatever, because one of the guys ran out of the unit and he left his door open and it was needles all in the unit. So um, I'm just trying to understand. I, I didn't do anything. I don't know my son. Like I said, he, he's not, he doesn't live with me. Okay. All right. So let me just stop you there for a minute. Council was very clear. They're not blaming you for any of them. Okay. So. Ms. Brewer, what do you, what do you want to do? You tell me what you want to do. You want to move. Well, you're going to have to move. The question is they've given, they're giving you through March. They, that's pretty good actually, because that's about 45 days out. And the only reason why they won't give me a lease is because of my son, what they told me. Um, and I explained to them that he's not there. I, I just need to find something. No. Okay. All right, look. The son, he stood in my face. And there's no way that he could stay with me. He yep. is my son. I'm just getting tired of being faced with something that's not my fault. <laughs> he has a debilitating mental illness. He has, that's what the doctor gave him. <laughs> I had brought the paperwork and showed them that this is his diagnosis, and I could just stop him from coming. But I asked him, did they have any other, any other places in the area? But she said that they couldn't be to me because of my son. So my thing is, what do you do with children who do have? been diagnosed with schizoaffective, and I guess I can't let him come to the house when I move, do move, I guess. I don't know. I'm just a little confused about what to do because I haven't done anything. I'm just trying to get out of here to the difference in the community. I'm with the foster grandparent program, so I work over at Global Tech Academy with third graders when schools resume. And this is why I'm back in college is because Robin Talbert, the principal, approached me and asked me, did I have my 60 credits? Because she was going to put me in the classroom. One of the teachers were leaving. So all I'm trying to do is just be a positive. No, I got you, Ms. Burr. Just <laughs> let, let me ask you this. Sure. It would be fair to say that it, if you had to tell your son to stay away, that that causes you great pain. That's fair. No, I mean, he spit in my face. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this, Ms. Brewer. Would you want to 
have something that protected you from your son. So that, and here's what I'm getting at. So that he can't come there. And that if he did come there, there might be police intervention to keep him away from you. It's just the third grader that I was working with. I wish I had the ones that I had. I was working with in this metal classroom. And they were third graders. They couldn't even count. And they didn't know that ABC. Okay. And that drew a concern for me. And that's why I went. And that, okay, I get you, Ms. Burr. I, I, that, here's, what, here's what I'm concerned about. All right. What I'm concerned about is that if and when you leave here, you're going to have the same problem in terms of your son? No, because he's going to get transferred to his own press again. He has to go to the hospital. And you're going to transfer him to Stone Press. He's been there before. That's where this paper is from, the doctor from Stone Press. But I thought he was coming out to your place. I'm sorry? Your son. Doesn't he come to your house? Yeah, but not, yeah, he... Yeah, he did. He did. But not, not here lately. All right. And that was just every now and then. He lives in Jackson with his girlfriend and, two, and they have two children. All right. So I know you don't want to move, but do you think that is enough time for you to move. What if I did? And let me just place it into context for you. If I were sitting there meeting with the parties, that's probably longer than I would have given you. So, Ms. Brewer, you had to tell me what you want to do because I, well, you don't have to do anything. I don't know that it helps, Your Honor. I'm, I'm, it, we're willing to do a conditional dismissal. Um, the problem is, you know, we have doors with knife marks in it from her son. We have a tenant who's afraid. We we have two units we can't even, we're not willing to lease at this point. So our hands are kind of tied. If we don't agree to something, we have to move forward on this. I mean, and, and I'm very sympathetic to Ms. Brewer. She's a, you know, she certainly doesn't deserve the situation, but it is the situation we have. What do you want to do? I just like, I'm in a position that I haven't done anything and I'm going to, you know. All right. Okay. So, Ms. Brewer, here's what. All right. Two things. Let me ask you this, Council, and I don't know if it's if it in any way changes your client's position. If she had a PPO, would that change your client's position on her staying there? Because then there's enforcement, at least. Of if he shows up, there's some mechanism to enforce because you don't have that right now. 
Um, the police have been there multiple times for him. He runs through, jumps on a roof, runs away. I believe there's already warrants out for his arrest. And I mean, when we called the police for police reports on his name, they were very, very familiar. So I don't know if that's going to stop this issue. And, and just to address one other factor, my understanding is he's going into an institution for a while, but that'll probably be about 30 days. He's done that before, and then he comes out, and then he's back around, is what I understand is the pattern. Fred, is, is he on the lease? He is not. No. He's never well, well but hold on a second. When he comes down, does he stay in your place? No, he doesn't stay in the place. He doesn't live with me. He doesn't live with me. So when he comes down, where is he? I've been told that he's been living in the apartment and then we'll see him on the roof and hanging out in the hallways, but it does appear that he is having some form of residency. Pardon? It seems that he's having some, he's living in the apartment to some degree. What's to some degree mean? I mean, intermittently. I yes. Ma'am, does he stay there? All right. I've never put him on my lease. No, I know that. But does he come and visit and come in the unit? He comes. He comes outside now because I come. He can't come in the unit. But now I'm okay, but because he's at the hospital. But hold it. Before. Was he coming down and staying in your unit? He hasn't stayed. He'll come and been here to visit. Visit. He doesn't stay. Okay. Maybe I'm using the wrong word. Is he so he's in your unit? Visiting. When he comes to the house, I let him in. Yeah. But he can't he doesn't stay. He can't stay. Okay, but here's the problem. And that's what they're talking about in general. They're, they're, I, I don't I think it's necessarily that. like you staying him staying overnight. Yeah, no, he doesn't stay overnight. I mean, it's a, he's there at all. Well, he can't come now because he's getting ready to be here. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. But what I'm saying is he can't come there at all. I mean, right. the, the prop. Are there are there police reports regarding this individual being at that address? They would not be in this file since we just filed a termination. Termination, right. But we had to produce them, I'm sure we could. Here's my question. If there was some assurance, at least as one can determine, that he's not there and can't be there and that if he were there that you could get a writ and do whatever would that be something acceptable with your client i mean because see what here's what i'm having a problem with what i'm having a problem with is there's a grown child with some certainly some issues that are causing a huge problem she's now being evicted because of that in part and the other issue that comes to my mind is whether or not she can, because you've got a subsidy, right? She has a HAP contract. Yeah, I don't. And my concern on that is also if we don't do a conditional dismissal, we could negatively impact her HAP contract. I don't want to do that if I can. Can't... No, I know. But what I'm saying is. The termination for the behavior of a guest as terminating the contract can be an issue. But it, it, I, I think you're typically the tenants responsible for the behavior of their guests, but more fundamentally, we're off lease for month to month. Oh, right. But you still have your half cut. 
I'm, and, and again, I'm not trying to put Ms. Brewer in any worse position than we have to. I'm trying very hard to fashion some remedy. Well, it's not going to be great for her. It's better than the alternatives. All right. Ms. Brewer, have you talked after last week? You appeared or you didn't appear? I have it marked in the board here. I, um, I had coverage counsel, but she was there. Says she was there. My, okay. my, my coverage counsel indicated that she was Judge Bar may mark it wrong. Okay. So have you spoken with an attorney at all, ma'am? Why not? Why? Doing this trying to pass my glasses. That's all I'm trying to do. I, I, yeah, but ma'am, yeah. you brought in there are rights given to you, including the right to have counsel. Why didn't you contact legal services, contact somebody regarding what you could do? I can't answer that. I don't know. I don't know. That's just how my life is right now. Okay, but Miss Brewer. That's fine that that's how your life is right now. Yeah. All of this is fine, except that you're about to lose your housing. If I decide not to go with anything you guys have come up with, just say there's no tribal issue, just as your judgment, you're out in 10 days. And somewhere and or another, ma'am, you got to figure out what you're going to do. I don't think anybody here is trying to say you're a bad person or you're this or that. And certainly I'm not. But at some point, you've got to make a decision about what to do. They've given you generous off. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. And I realize, counsel, you'll probably do it over your objection, and that's fine. They've been doing that all day to people. <laughs> I'm going to adjourn it out one week. But on this condition, if you come back and want to take what they're offering you in terms of a conditional dismissal and a move out at the end of March or that end of March period, it doesn't get extended out a week. It's the same as what it is now. You understand that, Ms. Brewer? You need, did you, when the rights were being read either today or last week, did you get the number to legal services and their walking hours? You heard the rights, right? I was reading. Okay. Miss Wyden, well, give her number to 665 6181. And they're right down there walking hours. So there's no excuse for anything. Your Honor, if I may, um, yes, I'm, I'm going to be on vacation next Friday. So if I could attend by Zoom and have coverage counsel attend, I would prefer that. A absolutely. If you can attend, you want to attend by Zoom? I'll, I'll be on the road probably. So it'll either be me or coverage counsel. Okay, that's fine. Um, have him fill out. Yeah. If you Once you make the decision, if you're going to appear by Zoom or whatever, or you can fill that out by Zoom. But if somebody's here, that's good. We're, we'll, we'll make it work for you. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate that. February 23rd, 2024. What time? 2. 2 p.m. Thank you. All right. Ms. Brewer, call that number, tell them you want, and then they have a prefer. We've given you the walk-up hours. They're right down in, in Ipsy on... Uh, Washington, South Washington. And those walk-in hours, you can walk in there and you'll be able to talk to somebody about what's involved in this. Understood? 
Thank you. Thank you, Count.